the government has started to roll out COVID-19 vaccination for the masses, starting with senior citizens. As a result, a lot of my patients are asking some basic important questions they want to know prior to COVID-19 vaccination. So today's special edition is to answer some of my patients' common questions prior to vaccination. The rolling out of COVID-19 vaccines is based on priority basis. The first would be the seniors, then subsequently with essential workers and others. But while awaiting for this COVID-19 vaccine, which is soon to be rolled out in your own locality, there are some things that you need to remember. Based on the CDC data, the death rate from 2019 to 2020 increased by 15.9%. And the top leading causes of death in 2020 now includes COVID-19 as the third leading cause of death. What's also very important, therefore, that this is the time that we should probably make sure that we all get COVID-19 vaccination. But for the meantime, while awaiting for this COVID-19 vaccines to be around or to be given to us, we know that the best ways to reduce transmission includes physical distancing, face mask, and face shield. And that based on the data, if you have face mask, face shield, and social distancing, this can really reduce transmission by more than 90%. The good news is now we have a way to prevent COVID-19 transmission and spread. The most important reason why we vaccinate ourselves is to protect us from severe disease and protection from hospitalization. All the COVID-19 vaccines available, whether Moderna, AstraZeneca, or Sinovac, do protect us from severe disease and do protect us from hospitalization. A diabetic who is medically stable and well controlled should get COVID-19 vaccine. You do expect a slight transient increase in your blood glucose 48 hours within 48 hours after the injection because of the body's immune response in response to the vaccination. However, whether you're on insulin, whether you're on oral medications, as long as you are compliant with your medications, there should be no reason for you not to be vaccinated. My advice is, please make sure you talk with your doctor prior to your COVID-19 vaccination. Majority of our patients who are diabetics are also hypertensives. But remember, one of the reasons why our blood pressure goes up is when we have the fear and anxiety because of the vaccination. So you may have some slight increase in your blood pressure during the screening method of the COVID-19 vaccination, and that should be okay. It should not contraindicate you from getting the vaccine. However, the Philippine Heart Association do recommend that you avoid caffeine or any caffeinated drinks around 30 minutes prior to your scheduled vaccination. And you should try to avoid taking medications that may increase your blood pressure like decongestants prior to your scheduled vaccination and do relax. However, Patients who are presenting with hypertensive emergencies, meaning a blood pressure of more than 180 or a diastolic blood pressure of more than 120 with signs and symptoms of shortness of breath or organ damage due to heart failure shall not be vaccinated and must be referred to the emergency room immediately. Vaccination can still go on, but it should be rescheduled until the condition is clinically controlled.
whereby all patients with hypertension can be vaccinated, but it is also best that you talk with your doctor prior to your vaccination schedule. Are diabetic patients who have other medical comorbidities, example, history of coronary artery disease, heart attacks, or stroke, may actually be prescribed blood thinners. If my patient is on a blood thinner, please do not interrupt their anticoagulant before getting the vaccine. There's no need. In fact, the risk for significant bleeding into the muscle is not increased among patients who take a direct oral anticoagulant. Remember, the COVID-19 vaccine is given as a shot into the deltoid muscle, just like the flu shot. And all our patients on blood thinners do get their flu shot yearly. However, please advise the vaccinator that the needle diameter should be the smallest possible, typically a 22 to 25 gauge needle. It has been shown that intramuscular flu shots in patients with full dose warfarin do not increase the risk of bleeding at the site of injection. So this precaution should actually be the same for COVID-19 vaccination. We all know that 90% of our diabetics are either overweight and obese. We know that being overweight and obese results in a chronic inflammatory disorder. It is therefore not surprising that obesity results in approximately 300,000 deaths annually. And obesity is among the chronic diseases that predispose patients with respiratory viruses to more severe disease progression. It is for this reason, therefore, that all obese patients with comorbidities are required to get COVID-19 vaccination. One of the common fears among our elderly patients, their question is, what are we going to expect after the vaccination? This is a compilation or a report of suspected adverse reaction to COVID-19 vaccines actually initially rolled out for healthcare workers during the middle of March of this year. What they found out was there are no new indications of adverse reactions. Most of the reports are minor adverse reactions. They're actually called reactogenic reactions in reaction. So if you develop these reactogenic reactions to the vaccine, actually find it good because it means your body is trying to boost the immune system in response to the vaccination. Now, if you're given the first dose, that primes the immune system. The second dose is to boost the immune system. So only after the second dose, two weeks after, where you will be considered fully vaccinated. But remember, since the second dose is to boost your immune system, you may actually get more symptoms during the second dose. However, if you don't get any reactions from the vaccines, don't worry, because not all patients do get a reaction from the COVID-19 vaccination. Another very important reaction to most patients after the vaccination is called the vasovagal reaction, where you get lightheadedness, you get some sort of dizziness and palpitation, and this may be related to a vasovagal response. There's no need for you to worry because anyway, after the vaccination, you'll be monitored for 30 minutes to one hour, and this should resolve on its own. Do we have data to support really that with COVID-19 vaccination, we reduce the infectious process, we reduce the transmission, and we reduce our chances of getting infected. Here's one publication from the New England Journal of Medicine, March of 2021. 
These are data from healthcare workers who were vaccinated in a healthcare center. You will clearly see that after dose one, 14 days after dose one, there was a significant drop in the number of new infections. And clearly, after the second dose, there was a significantly lower risk of developing new infection, suggesting that true enough, COVID-19 vaccination to work. True enough, COVID-19 vaccines may not protect us 100% against being infected, but it protects us against what matters most, and that is the development of severe COVID-19 disease, and it can prevent 100% from us going into the hospital. So moving forward, my appeal for everyone is for our patients to get vaccinated. If the assessors, those who are screening at the site of vaccination are not sure if you can be cleared or not, to avoid delay in your vaccination schedule, I would advise that if you're a diabetic, if you're hypertensive, if you're unsure of your health condition, probably talk with your doctor and get a note for clearance prior to going to the vaccination site. In the advent of extensive news coverage, in the advent of multiple bloggers, in the advent of multiple YouTube videos present in social media, a lot of pseudoscience and false information abound. So here's my appeal to everyone. Please be mindful and be careful because internet popularity, if there's a blogger who is very famous with multiple subscribers, it really does not equate to him presenting accurate and truthful study or story. Anybody can blog and do a YouTube video, but it does not mean his reporting is all factual. It is therefore my appeal that you be aware of the presence of pseudoscience and pseudoscientists, because they are plenty nowadays. The bottom line is, try to help us medical practitioners spread the wisdom and the gospel of vaccination truths. So expect our seniors to be called for vaccination soon. If you're scheduled for one, I hope you have reviewed this video and have realized that it's really worth it getting a vaccination. That yes, you may have some adverse effects, but these are mild adverse effects expected of a vaccination. Be a part of this movement to hopefully stop this global pandemic. Go ahead and have yourselves vaccinated.